Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to learn about building a background processing service with Azure Container Apps. And then we are going to see how you can scale it out with Kubernetes Event Driven Auto Scaling or KEDA. There are two types of microservices. There can be synchronous response microservices or asynchronous microservices. What asynchronous means is that the service listens to a queue and based on the messages that the queue receives, the application processes them. Now, if you look at this scenario here, this is a common pattern when we build our applications. We have a queue like Azure Storage Queue or Service Bus Queue, and then we have an application that is listening to that queue to process the messages that this queue receives. And based on the number of messages that this queue receives, or based on the load of the queue, the background processing application should scale out. Now, if you go into Azure documentation, here we have three types of scale triggers that Azure Container Apps support. We have HTTP traffic based scaling and event driven and CPU memory based scaling. In one of my previous videos, I have shown you how HTTP based traffic work, how that creates multiple replicas of your application and CPU memory based scaling is based on the CPU usage. Azure Container Apps environment will spin up more replicas when required. Both of these ways of scaling, they're simpler to understand, especially if you're not coming from a microservice development background, because these two are kind of reactive phase of scaling. If you really think about it, when the HTTP traffic is high, the application can scale out. When the CPU load is or memory is heavy, your application can scale out. These are kind of reactive ways of scaling. Event-driven scaling, it's a kind of a proactive way of scaling. Now let me explain what event-driven scaling is. Now if I go back to this diagram here, as I said, this background processing application listens to this storage queue. You can scale this out based on the CPU or memory usage, but you can't scale this out based on the HTTP traffic because this container does not receive HTTP traffic. What we can do is we can have a component like this that will monitor the number of messages that we have in the queue and based on that number of messages we can scale out this container app for example let's say if there are 20 messages in the queue there will be one container app instance when 40 there will be two and when 60 there will be three like that based on the number of messages in this architectural component here we can scale out our application and that is exactly what keda does what keda means is that kubernetes event driven Auto scaling. And now, if I go into keda.sh, we have the definition here. It is a Kubernetes based event driven auto scaler. With keda, you can drive the scaling of any container in Kubernetes based on the number of events needing to be processed. This is mainly used in Kubernetes, but Azure Container Apps supports it because Azure Container Apps has Kubernetes running underneath. Now, if you go into scalers here, we have a lot of scalers here. As you can see, we have Azure Service Bus and ActiveMQ, MongoDB, MSSQL, MySQL, and Azure Storage Queues. These are the supported scalers. So basically, if we go back into architecture, this component here, we have Azure Storage Queues and we can go with Azure Storage Queue Scaler. If I go into that tab, this is how you can configure the scaler. These are the information that the scaler requires for it to function. I'm going to go back into architecture and now let's implement this and see how it works. If you look at the script here, let me explain what I'm doing here. And I'm creating a resource group and a storage account. And then I'm going to get the connection string of it. And then I'm going to create a queue in that storage account. Now let me run this script to create the storage account and the queue. I'm going to press F8. As you can see, the script is running. And if we go back into our architecture, we have created this component now. Now let me go back. As you can see, we have created this storage account. And if I go into Azure portal and here we have the storage account. So we have completed this part of our demo. Now let me create an application, a container that listens to this storage queue. Now for building this, we have many options. We can build an application from scratch using Azure Storage SDK. And that will take a little bit more time. For this demo, I'm going to go with the easiest path for me to listen to the messages in the queue. And that is, for me, is creating a function app and containerizing that function app. I'm going to Visual Studio and let me click on functions. Let me call it background 
processing app now right now i'm going to create it and we can specify as you can see the type of trigger that we want since we have azure storage created i'm going to go with this option azure storage azure queue storage and the name of the queue is if i go back into my script as you can see the name is my queue and i'm gonna keep my queue here and we can set the connection string name as well let me call it connection string all right now let me create our application as you can see our function app is in place and if you look here we have the name of the queue and the name of the connection string as well and if i go into local settings file i have added the connection string and the connection string you can find it here I'm assigning the connection string to this variable and as you can see you can get the connection string that way all right now let me run this application and see how it works application is running now and if we go into the script and scroll down a bit i have here a for loop that will send 10 messages into the queue that we have created let me run this i'm pressing f8 here all right the messages are getting queued now if i go into application as you can see the application is processing the messages that i'm queuing from here now let me stop queuing process and let me go back into visual studio and let me add a thread dot sleep here because um, we don't want the messages to be processed instantly i'm gonna add like 10 seconds to process a message something like this all right now our application is ready we have gone with a function app it doesn't have to be a function app i went with function apps because i don't have to deal with all the sdks and all that for this demo now we have to turn this application into a container for that what i can do is i can just right click on the project and i can add docker support visual studio will automatically create a docker file for me now what we can do is we can just publish this container into a container registry now let me publish it and we can select the container registry and i'm going to go with docker hub my public image repository and i'm going to enter my username and password here all right now we have the publish profile in place let me click publish here to publish this image to docker hub as you can see it is getting published we have published application to docker hub now this as you can see is the the name of the container i'm going to copy that and then i'm going to go back into visual studio and here we have two files i'm going to go with this one template without scaling and again you will be able to find this in the description below and we have two resources as you can see we have the azure container apps environment and then the queue reader the actual container app i'm going to use this arm template here to create the resources because we can't waste time going through the portal and i have shown you in my previous videos how you can create container apps using azure portal this is the resource of the azure container app and i'm going to scroll down a bit and here we have the name of the image i'm going to paste what i have copied from the docker hub as you can see the name of the container it is q reader and we have an environment variable and that is the connection string and that is exactly what i have added here as well to run this locally and i am referencing a secret as you can see and that has reference to the parameter that i'm passing in from here and i'm gonna go back into the script i'm gonna run this script to create the container apps environment and container app now all right as you can see the application is getting deployed we have successfully deployed our container apps environment and container app to azure if we go into azure portal and in the resource group we can see the environment and the container app as well now if we go into the queue reader container app and as you can see it doesn't have an ingress enabled because this is listening to a azure storage queue if i go into secrets and this is a important component here i have this secret that secret is the connection string to my storage account you should have this in place before going forward the next thing that we're going to focus on is the scale i'm going into scale tab here as you can see we don't have scaling rules defined for this revision i'm going to edit and deploy a new scale rule i'm going to go into scale tab and here we can add a custom scale rule 
Now this is where the fun begins. We can add the rule name and I'm gonna call it Q rule. Doesn't really matter. And we have HTTP scaling and Azure queue. I'm gonna go with custom. We can enter the rule type. Now if you go into this scalers page and I'm gonna go with this storage queue scaler and this is the page that documents the specification. Now let me copy the type of this Keda scaler and this applies to all the other scalers as well. This is how you configure any of the scalers. Let me copy it and then I'm going to paste the custom rule type here and secret reference. We need a secret reference and that is going to be Q connection and the connection parameter. If you scroll down a bit, it is connection. I'm going to put copy and paste. Now we have to add metadata for this Keda scalar. Now, if you go back and scroll a bit up, as you can see, we have to enter this metadata to this section here. Let me go back and add Q name, Q length, All right, as you can see, I have added all the parameters of this metadata section here. Now we have to insert the values. The queue name, it's going to be my queue and the queue length. I'm going to go with five. What this means is that for every five messages that you have in the queue, there will be a replica. For example, if you have 50 messages in the queue, there will be 10 replicas. And here we can in insert the the connection string name. I'm going to go with connection string and the account name. It's going to be, let me go back into the script that we have used. And this is the name of this storage account. Let me copy that and paste it here. And cloud, what is this? Now, if you go back into the reference of Azure Storage Queue Scalar and scroll down a bit, they have this documentation. With this documentation here, you can identify, you can know what these parameters really mean. I mean, if you go into scalers, for example, if you're going with, let's say, Azure Log Analytics, that also has the same format. If something is not clear to you, you can find here. The cloud, it's not an Azure government or China or German, any, any private cloud like that. This is Azure Public Cloud. Let me copy it and I'm going to paste it here. Now we have added the rule name and the type and custom rule type and this is the Keda scale identifier and we have the secret reference and we have all the metadata in place. Let me click add and let me create a new revision. If you're not familiar with the revisions, please watch my previous video that I've done on revisions. The changes that you make in the revision scope or the scaling and containers, this section will create a new revision, keeping the old revision. And one other thing that you should keep in mind is that when you create these new revisions, you can have multiple active revisions. And when the container is listening to a queue, it is best to have one active revision. All right, now we have successfully deployed our new revision. And it is time for us to test how this works now. If we go into log stream, we have one replica in place and we can see the logs as well. Let me go into the script that we have created earlier and let me try to run this part of the script. And this is basically sending messages, 10 messages, as you can see in a for loop to my service bus. You can do this with a C sharp application as well. Now, as you can see, the application is running and let's see whether this works. We have the message ID in the logs. And if I click refresh, the replica count it's still one and that is because as soon as i send a message to the queue it processes it so to test this we need a way to send messages to the queue faster and that's why i have created this script here parallel powershell for each command what this is doing is that it'll send 100 messages it'll send these messages parallelly and there's a throttle limit specified so basically this script will send 10 messages each time. And don't be intimidated by this script. You can just create a C sharp application if you want, and you can find this script in the description down below if you want to run it as well. If this doesn't work in your machine, it is probably because you don't have PowerShell upgraded 
let me run this and all right as you can see the messages are getting queued if i go back into azure portal and click refresh and if i click on replicas as you can see there are four active replicas and after a few seconds as you can see we have a lot of replicas and now if you go into azure documentation and with this page here you can learn a lot about scaling and you know for example you will find a lot of interesting information like container apps implements Keda scaled object with the following default settings like polling interval 30 seconds cooldown period 300 these types of information you will find a lot of cool stuff here now this is what i wanted to show you in this video how you can create a background processing service with azure container apps and how you can scale it out with Keda scalers if you have further questions or comments please let me know down below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you learned something new today and i will see you with another video like this soon and thanks for watching